Good morning. Welcome to lesson 11 of Additional Maths. And today we're just going to have some fun sketching factorized polynomials. Okay, so sketching the graph of functions which are in fully factorized form. <clears throat> Before we start and look at this specific graph that I've said here, we're just going to have a think about different shapes of different graphs that we should know already. Okay, so some prerequisite knowledge on different graphs that we should have. Firstly, if you have a linear graph, okay, so that will be of the form y equals mx plus c, okay, so that, you, that will be an x to the power of 1 graph, so a linear graph, you'll get some form of straight line, okay, so a linear graph looks like that. If you have a quadratic, so a quadratic graph will have the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and that will have some form of valley shape, okay, or a hill shape. So if it's a positive quadratic, you'll have something like that. If it's a negative quadratic, so the coefficient of x squared is negative, it'll be the opposite. It'll, it'll be reflected in the x-axis. It'll, it'll have a hill, a maximum point rather than a minimum point. Okay, so that's a quadratic graph. If you had a cubic, Okay, so if you have a cubic, it'll look something like this. So a cubic, if it's positive cubic, it'll start at negative infinity and come up and then bend down and then go back up to positive infinity. If the coefficient of x squared is negative, so if it's a negative cubic, it'll do the opposite. It'll start up, come down, have a little bend and then go all the way down to negative infinity. So that's what a cubic will look like. So that'll be anything where x cubed is your highest power of x. Um, and then next, if you had a quartic, so that'll be something x to the power of 4 plus something x cubed plus something x squared plus something x plus something. That will be a quartic. This time they'll just introduce an extra bend. Okay, so if it's a positive quartic, it'll look something like this. If it's a negative quartic, it'll be the other way around. Okay then you'll keep going. If you had a quintic, etc., it'll keep introducing an extra bend. But let's move on. So if you have a trigonometric graph, so for example, the sine function, we're going to look at more in the trigonom trigonometry chapter of this um, additional maths course, but it'll have a, some form of a wave continuing to up and down and up and down and continuing on in this pattern, okay, to infinity. As you go in the x direction, it'll keep staying between those two maximum and minimum values. It'll still be between those two horizontal lines. And that's the graph of y equals sine x. Okay, so that's a trigonometric graph. If it was tan x though, the graph of y equals tan x, it looks slightly different. But we'll, we'll look at those when we look at uh, trigonometric graphs in that chapter. And lastly, let, if you have an exponential graph, so that's of the form y equals something to the power of x. So where the where the power is the variable, where, sorry, where the exponential is the variable. Okay, the power expression, the exponential itself is the thing that's changing. So if you have y equals 2 to the power of x, it'll look something like this. And it'll exponentially increase as you increase in the x direction. The y, the y increase will be by some, some scale factor for every one increase in the x direction, okay? And it'll go through at 1 if it's that, this, because when you plug in x, x is 0, you get a to the power of 0, which is 1, okay? So that's what an exponential graph will look like. So those are the different types of graphs and their shapes, okay? We're going to look at specific graph here, which is in a factorized form. And we're going to learn how to very quickly sketch it if it's in factorized form. Okay, so if we have this y equals x, lots of x minus 3, lots of x plus 2, lots of x plus 5, we have it in fully factorized form, and hence we have lots of roots of the graph. This has roots where x is 0, where x is 3, where x is minus 2, and where x is minus 5. 
Those are the values of x which will make each bracket equal to zero and will, therefore will make the entire expression equal to zero. With the first x here, think of that as x on its own in a bracket. Okay, it is being multiplied by the rest. Think of it as x plus zero if you'd like. A value of zero will make that equal to zero and therefore will make the entire expression zero. So we have four roots there. This is a quartic expression. It's a quartic polynomial. If I expanded each bracket, so if I expand the foot, these two together, that will create a quadratic. Multiply the result of the quadratic by x minus three, you get a cubic. Multiply the result of the cubic by x and you'll get a qu quartic, an x to the power of four expression. Okay, with x cubes and x squares and x's and a constant at the end. But here, the highest power of x will be x to the power of four, so it's a quartic expression. So it'll have the shape like this one here, like the quartic there. And you've got to think, well, this is a positive quartic. Is this expression going to give me a positive quartic? Yes, it will. Okay, it'll give me a positive quartic because x times x times x times x is x to the power of four. So it's positive x to the power of four when I expand all the x's together from all the brackets. So when I draw my sketch, all I need to know is what the roots are. So I'll put my y-axis here, my x-axis there. I have my roots at zero, so it'll cross through at zero, it'll cross through at three, it'll cross through at minus two, and it'll cross through at minus five. And it'll have the shape I described, so it'll have some shape like this. There we go, there's my quartic sketched. Okay, I need to put in these numbers, minus five, minus two, and three there. And then that's my sketch. That's all I need to have a general idea of what it will look like. Okay, so can you have a go at the following one? Can you sketch the graph of y equals x, x plus one, x plus seven, x minus four? Okay, pause, have a go, have a very quick sketch, and then I'll go through that, and then I'll go through another different type. So what your sketch should look like is as follows. You should have, you should have roots at zero, minus one, minus seven, and four. So my roots are gonna be at four there, at zero, minus one, and at minus seven. It's a positive quartic because the x times the x times the x times the x is positive x to the power of four. And so my graph will look something like this. Okay. And there we go. Now, next time, I'm going to show you how to sketch this. Sketch y equals x plus four all squared multiplied by seven minus x. So have a think first. What type of graph are you expecting? Is this linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, what? So x plus four all squared would be a quadratic. If I times it by another expression um, involving x, it'll turn it into a cubic. So I'm expecting a cubic. There are three roots here. Two of them are the same root, because if I wanted to, I could rewrite this as x plus 4, x plus 4, 7 minus x. So I have roots of x is minus 4, or x is minus 4, or x is 7. So there is a repeated root, okay, from the repeated bracket. And that is important in terms of the graph, and I'll show you why in a second. When I want to sketch this graph, I've got my y-axis there, my x-axis here. I mark off the roots, so minus 4 there, 7 there. And I usually expect, or, or often expect, three places where it crosses the axis. So this confuses me a little bit. 
what's what's going to happen. Usually a quadratic will come up and go down through that or go down and come up through that. But I've got a cubic here. So how can I fit that into those two points? Well, the key thing is, is having the minus four as a repeated root. OK, so this minus four there is a repeated root, which means if it was a single root, it would go through the axis at that point. But because it's repeated, it hits the axis at that point and then goes back opposite, back the way it came. So it bounces off the axis at that point. So it touches the axis at that point. That's what a repeated root will do. So it bounces off the axis at minus four. So the question is, does it bounce from above or does it bounce from below? So we need to think, what's the shape? We've got x times x times negative x. So that'll give me negative x cubed. So it's a negative cubic. A negative cubic comes down, then goes up, and then ends up at negative infinity. So it'll come down, it'll bounce off at minus 4, and then it'll go through there at 7. So there is my sketch with a repeated root at minus 4 and a normal root where it goes through the axis at 7. If you wanted to find the y-intercept, all you would need to do is multiply 4 by 4 by 7. So 16 times 7. 10 7s, 70. 6 7s, 42. So that's 112. So that would be 112 as the y-intercept. Okay, and there's my sketch. Okay, so have a go now at sketching the graph of y equals x minus 1, all squared, x plus 3. Pause the video at this point, have a go at sketching it, and then I'm going to go through the answer. So this has a repeated root at 1. Okay, so 1 is a repeated root, and minus 3 is the other root. Minus 3 is a normal root. Also, it's x times x from the two brackets times x, so it's a positive cubic. So when I sketch it, I'm expecting a shape which comes up, goes back down, and then goes back up again. Minus 3 is one of the roots. 1 is the repeated root. That's the one it bounces off the axis. So you either had it bounces there and then goes through, or it goes through and then bounces there. Now I know that 1 is the repeated root, so it'll come through, go down, bounce off the axis at that point. And there's the graph of y equals f of x. where that point is minus 3. If you want to find the y-intercept, you would multiply minus 1 by minus 1 from the, those two brackets with x minus 1 in them by 3, which would be 3. Okay, well done if you got that right, including the y-intercept. Okay, what you should do now is have a go at the first exercise and the second exercise from chapter 6 of the textbook, so exercise 6.1 and 6.2, just practicing drawing different functions. Okay, so it talks about linear functions, it talks about um, quadratic functions in factorized form, cubics, quartics, etc. Um, and then it goes into exponential and trigonometric graphs. Just enjoy practicing drawing all the different types of graphs, okay, until you feel fluent and confident that you know all the different shapes of the different types of graphs you should know and can sketch them either by just plugging in different values for x until you get y or by using the knowledge of what the factors do to where the roots are, etc., on the graph. Um, so this is the textbook. Go away, practice, enjoy, and I will see you in the next lesson.